When Joe Biden pressured Ukraine to fire its top prosecutor back in 2016, it was clear what his goal was. He wanted to take the heat off the Biden family's overseas influence peddling operation, which was caught up in that prosecutor's probe. Publicly, of course, Joe Biden didn't admit that, though. Instead, he claimed that Ukraine's prosecutor was just guilty of corruption. That was the cover story. Joe Biden was supposedly an international crime fighter determined to clean up the governments of foreign countries. And as part of this anti-corruption crusade, Ukraine's prosecutor just had to go. They had to be terminated. Less than a decade later, a similar narrative is now playing out once again, except this time it's happening much closer to home in Guatemala. The Biden administration has publicly declared that Guatemala's attorney general, as well as the secretary general of Guatemala's public ministry, are involved in, quote, significant corruption. They're so corrupt, in fact, that they're not even allowed to enter the United States or the European Union. These are very bad people, we're told. Just like that Ukrainian prosecutor. And just as we saw in Ukraine, there's clear signs this pressure campaign is working. Guatemala's public ministry has just issued a statement warning that the president of Guatemala may take imminent action to, quote, unconstitutionally remove the attorney general of Guatemala and the chief of the public ministry. Whatever's about to happen in Guatemala, it seems obvious that the Biden administration is involved in some way. This week, Secretary of State Tony Blinken traveled to Guatemala after this interview with senior officials. And just a few weeks ago in late March, Joe Biden hosted the president of Guatemala at the White House. So at this point, there's really two possibilities. Either the Biden administration has taken a genuine good faith interest in rooting out corruption in Guatemala, and I'll give you all a second to laugh, or something else is going on. To understand what the second possibility entails, it's important to ask this question. What reasons could the Biden administration possibly have for wanting to silence the Attorney General of Guatemala? Have either the Attorney General or the Secretary General done anything in recent months that might upset high-level figures in the Biden administration? Let's see. Just days ago, as part of an ongoing investigation, Guatemalan authorities raided the office of an international nonprofit called Save the Children. This is an extremely well-connected and well-funded organization. It's been operating in Guatemala for decades. In fact, the president's wife, Jill Biden, recently served as chair of the board. The purpose of this raid could not have been more serious. Guatemalan authorities say the raid concerns the, quote, treatment of Guatemalan children in Texas. And according to the letter from Guatemala's public ministry, there's a possibility that NGOs like Save the Children may be involved in child trafficking operations. The letter names several other NGOs as potentially involved in some way in these operations as well, including Changing the Way We Care, the World Childhood Foundation, Arise, and La Union de Puebla Entero. To be perfectly clear, nothing's been proven yet. For its part, Save the Children strenuously denies these allegations, but the probe remains ongoing. And if the Attorney General and Public Ministry are shut down, the probe will be too. Of course, if there's any truth to this allegation whatsoever, it is the single largest untold scandal of the Biden administration. It would mean that an organization tied to the Biden family, one that was supposed to combat human trafficking, has been enabling it. But predictably, no mainstream media organizations have looked into this. So I decided to do it myself. The first thing I did was hire a research firm to track all U.S. government spending in Guatemala over the last three fiscal years, from 2021 to 2024. It turns out that in that period, the U.S. government has issued more than $21 million in grant money to save the children. That's your money. And the U.S. has spent well over $350 million in Guatemala more generally with our tax dollars. Where is all this money going? Are U.S. taxpayers in any way subsidizing child trafficking operations or funding organizations that should be doing more to prevent this kind of trafficking? I'll have more specifics on what I found in a moment. But first, to address the most important issues right away, I did what the Biden administration has essentially told media not to do. I decided to speak directly with the source, Secretary General Angel Pine, not to accuse him of corruption, but to hear what he has to say about child trafficking in Guatemala, the possible role of the U.S. government in enabling it, or worse. This is an interview that, as you're about to hear, the U.S. Embassy apparently did not want me to conduct. Days before this conversation took place, the Secretary General says he was warned by someone connected to the U.S. Embassy that he was, quote, playing with fire by taking part in this interview. Angel Pine joins me now. Secretary General Angel Pine, thank you for joining us. And good to see you. I want to start with this. We've got this letter here that was recently sent from Ministerio Publico to Ken Paxton, the Attorney General of Texas. And yes. I want to read you a small section of this letter here in the English translation. As you know, deficiencies in security and diplomacy related to the border between the United States and Mexico 
have resulted in significant increases in drug trafficking, but also a devastating emergence of human trafficking. In relation to the new complaint that has been filed with this institution, a horrifying pattern of disappearance of children from Guatemala has been brought to our attention. And it has been reported to the public ministry that a complex network involving NGOs or non-governmental organizations operating within Guatemala who collaborate with specific entities in the state of Texas are implicated in the abuse of Guatemalan children when they are away from their parents and have no one to protect to them. Can you expand on this? Tell me about the letter, why you sent it, what is the problem, and what do people need to know about it? Ministerio Público of Guatemala is the Attorney General's office of this, of this country. The claim was received, and when it was assigned to a, to a special unit, the special unit also gave uh, information to the Attorney General's office. Uh, you know that what we are saying there is what the claim is stating. The special thing here is that this is a, a, a letter that wants to, to have a beginning of, of interrelationship with uh, the Attorney General's office in Texas. Why? Because the claim also says that many of the people that is going from Central America to the United States of America are, are going to Texas. I want to read you another part of this letter. It says the public ministry obligated to protect the human rights and interests of the inhabitants of the Republic of Guatemala will spare no effort and exhaust all necessary efforts to locate and criminally prosecute those responsible for this enormous tragedy. And that's that's obviously referring to the child trafficking from Guatemala into the United States. So tell me, you know, with authority, you guys are going to leave no stone unturned. You are going to investigate this to the ends of the earth if necessary and hold everybody criminally accountable who's responsible for the trafficking of kids from Guatemala into the United States, correct? Yes, correct, correct. The last three years, we have we have had an increase of persons going from this region to the United States of America. We also have had several claims about, about different felonies being committed in the traveling, but we didn't have until now a claim with so many details as in as this this claim and this involves sexual crimes against children correct that's that's what i get from the letter yes yes the letter says that the claims also says that i understand very recently you guys have raided an NGO by the name of Save the Children. Our researcher, Rando Land, they looked into the grants that are headed to some of these NGOs, and we found that over the last three years, Save the Children has received more than $21 million in grant money. What can you tell us about Save the Children and these NGOs more broadly, if you can't talk specifically about Save the Children, and the role that this complaint says they play in the trafficking of kids from Guatemala or Central America at large to the United States. And right now, we know that there is a, a black number that you cannot see it on the official numbers that are, are going from this region to the United States, and they are not getting record of it. Somebody told me about 85,000 children in the United, going to the, United, to the United States that nobody knows what happened with them. This is why it is important that this claim has to be investigated, because yes, yes, uh, what you say is, is, is true. You know, that brings to mind something I think the public needs to know, and it's a very shocking fact. 70% of all unaccompanied minors, that means kids coming to America with no adult with them, 70% come from either Guatemala or Honduras. Those two countries, only 8% come from Mexico. And the rest is, you know, scattered among different countries in the world. For 70% to come from those two countries, and this is data from the U.S. government, how can it be anything but child trafficking? Do you have any explanation that makes rational sense for how Guatemala and Honduras could make up 70% of unaccompanied minors if there's not something criminal going on? Yeah, no, you know, this is a, a, a theme and an issue that we have to work together as a region, work together with the United States of America, but because we have to know the truth. We cannot uh, put our eyes shut, you know, and, and say that this is not happening. The claim here in Guatemala says that uh, maybe there is participation of government, people in government, in both governments from the region and from the United States, allow, allowing this kind of uh, situation. And there is uh, some NGOs from the region allowing this. And yes, 
they talk about the different countries of Central America. You know, you mentioned there that you're hoping for the cooperation of the U.S. government in this. However, you know, you guys just raided Save the Children. I'm wondering, are you aware of the position held by the president's wife in that organization previously at Save the Children? That she was no. the chair? No, we didn't know that. Uh, we we understand that information when it was put in on the social media. Saying that in the United States, we we have had a lot of communication from different media in the United States of America, and now we are understanding many, many, many information about this matter. Saying that, uh, I have to tell you that the, the State Department has uh, got the communication with the Ministerio Público of Guatemala regarding some administrative decisions that our high authority has been taking by law, you know, because the Constitution gave her those faculties, but they didn't want her to take those those decisions. We have been working with all the agencies from the United States of America, technical agencies, you know, DEA for for the for themes of, of, of drug, drug traffic, we have working. We have been working with HSI. We have been working with FBI, but in in the political uh, matter of a relationship, we have had some some difficulties. They have put also uh, our attorney general in, in a list, saying some things that they haven't proved. They don't have information. When we ask why they have put her in that list, they have put me also in that list. They don't respond that. Why do you think the Biden administration is treating you guys like you're corrupt officials? They're treating you very similarly to the way Joe Biden treated a prosecutor in Ukraine that was investigating his family. And they made sure they got rid of that problem. It seems like they're treating you guys like a problem to get rid of and like they're using the tools at their disposal within government to do it, which others would argue is very corrupt in itself. So how do you see it that they're doing this on the heels of you and the AG investigating child trafficking and all kinds of criminality that's happening coming in through our southern border here in the United States? You know, I have to be honest, we didn't know that the uh, persons from the family of the president of the United States of America work in this kind of NGOs. We didn't know that. But uh, we, as institution, take some decisions regarding 10, 15 people from different units in the in the Ministerio Público of Guatemala the, that they were fired from this institution. And they didn't like that, you know, they didn't like that. We don't know what, what they were working with them, but they didn't like that. Saying that because of that decisions, they they started to cut cooperation to the to the institution, uh, even though that would be very negative to the purposes of the United States of America. You know, because if they don't work with Ministerio Público of Guatemala, everything that is a, tran a transnational felony cannot have a good purpose in in the United States of America. But the the thing of the family, we didn't know that. We didn't know why they were so focused on that matter, you know, because when you go to see the, the work that Maria Consuelo Porras Argueta, who is a attorney general here in Guatemala, if you compare the fight that she has put through the drug cartels, you know, is 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 historic. If you see her predecessor, that was another attorney general who has claims here in, in Guatemala by corruption and other things for the drug cartels in that time, for extraditions, they had in four years like 46. Only in 2021, uh, our attorney general had 57, only in one year. Let me stop you there. Do you think that's the influence of the United States, that the United States influence results in less convictions, less prosecutions in Central American, South American countries where, you know, we're sort of, you know, getting in there and controlling and meddling in the situations and, and stopping justice from happening? Is that is that kind of how you see it? I can speak for Guatemala, you know, because I work here in Guatemala in, in attorney general's office. Uh, I don't know if in other countries, but having the experience that we have had here, of this kind of behavior with us, I can assure that it is happening in other places, you know. When I started to talk with you the, maybe like one week ago, you, I remember uh, you put a, a, an ex post in your account and you said that you talked with me. And that was the, the beginning of an attack in different media here in Guatemala because they say I don't have the faculties to sign the letter that you have read right now. But I have the faculties and I was instructed by the attorney general to put that letter and send it to, to attorney general Paxton. And they have been putting in a pattern 
that we, we have been receiving for the last three years. When they don't like something that we are doing here in different investigations, they start an attack in, in different media, media actors, and they start a lot of reactions, you know, not in the, in the legal matter, but in the, in the media public matter. Of influence. They, they want to publicly influence people's perception of what's going on. You know, it's the same thing they do in the U.S. The good news is a lot of these big media outlets are losing their power because the media effectively has turned into people like myself yeah. and other people who are doing work like me online who are able to just independently get the truth. We owe nothing to anybody except for mm. the truth to our audience. You know, exactly. life is all about incentives. And I think the news business, their incentives are all messed up. In general, big media organizations, their incentives are toward access and power. Whereas my incentive is always to give my audience the truth, whatever that is, because that's what my audience likes. They like to just know the truth and that's the public at large. So without fear or fervor, we search the truth out. And from what I gather, that's what you guys are gonna do investigating yeah. this trafficking and criminality at the border is it doesn't matter if it involves the president's family or his wife previously being on the board or anybody, it doesn't matter who's involved, you guys are searching out the truth and you're gonna hold the people accountable who are responsible for hurting children. Do you have that right? Yes, yes, that, that's correct. And you know, I, I don't want to put in, in a difficult position uh, the person who, talk to, who told me this, but I have to tell you, I, I cannot be silent of this kind of behavior because you know, like one week ago, uh, a person that I know came to me and told me, you know, somebody from the U.S. Embassy talked to me. She, he knew that he or she, I don't know if it was he or she, uh, knew that I know you. And he told me that tell Angel, tell Angel, tell Angel Pineda that maybe he's starting to play with fire. But just to have somebody to, to have the nerve to go to a, to a person that works in the government to say that, that is very, very very dangerous, you know. It's they wild. Are, they, it's wild. Yes, yes, it's wild. And and you I don't know why they are doing it. They have seen that we we are not going to be bended. We're not going to 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 put our work aside just because they say something, you know. They already have put us in a lot of lists because uh, my, the, the attorney general of Guatemala and myself, the different persons that works in different units here or hearing in Guatemala that have several investigations that regards some interest of the United States of America, when when they start to work, they have been put in this list also. We have been put in lists by 42 countries, I guess, you know, and I don't know how you can have this this uh, influence, you know, to, to put somebody in a list in another country just by, by saying, just by saying, don't, doesn't having uh, the proof to or the evidence to support this uh, that we are corrupt and we are anti-democratic. They are they are saying now that we are insurrectives because we are investigating the president here in Guatemala. Well, they use words they don't understand to be to be completely yeah. frank with you, and that's <laughs> happening in the United States as well. You know, they're saying that you know you need to save democracy in one hand, and then in the other hand, they're throwing people's names off the ballot, which doesn't seem very democratic to me. So, no. you know, it, this is happening all over the world where they use these buzzwords, they use these names like democracy to try to pull people in and say, oh, we're saving this thing. When in fact, they're very anti-democratic. They're not looking for the will of the people. They're looking to influence people in a direction that they see fit where they can get enough power to rule over the people. Uh, yeah. But I wanna ask you, I wanna go further down this question line. You reached out to the United States in good faith, asking for help, for cooperation. Has the Biden administration reached back out to Guatemala, to the AG's office to say, hey, you know, let's put everything aside, all these allegations in the past. Let's take a look at this with fresh eyes together. Let's try to investigate why 70 percent of the unaccompanied minors coming to the border, presenting themselves are coming from Honduras and Guatemala. Has that happened at all? They, they don't talk with us. They, but for the last three years, they haven't had communication with us in a political and in a high-level matter. There is a special thing, you know, uh, United States of America used to work with us in the political matter, also in the high-level, in this model for drug, but they have been retiring from this, not by the agencies, but yes, by the political matter. We have been reaching by letters to the U.S. Embassy here in Guatemala regarding to they to help us in this matter, but we haven't had a response. That was before the claim. Now that we have the claim, 
they are trying to, to reach us because in the in the message that I tell I told you that I was received, they already told me that they can help us in the investigation, but this is not official communication. In the threat that you received from somebody who says that they were told this at a U.S. embassy oh. that you were, you know, playing with fire, did they not want you to do this interview? Is that what it was about? They don't want you to do this interview. They want you to back off and they, they want this to go away. And is there any sort of unspoken exchange, some sort of quid pro quo, if you will, that they want something or will give you something for your silence or for you, you know, not not going and investigating these matters. You have you can interpret it in, in any matter. Uh, anyway, the, I, I don't took serious these kind of things in the way that stop to work to, to being working here in, in, in Guatemala. But yes, I have to take some some actions, you know, to protect me, protect my family and anything, because I don't know what they are trying to say with that. Yeah. Again, our researcher, Rando Land at Oilfield Rando, he looked into this for us and we were very interested in some of the money flowing from the United States into Guatemala. And we're going to talk about a number of it here. I've got a lot of grants sitting with us. Um, and there's one thing that really stood out to me and I want to get this exact. So I'm going to read it to you. Between 2021 and 2024, there were individual awards on a regular basis, about over 80 of them. And they ranged anywhere from, you know, a few hundred bucks to $44,000. You know, it was generally somewhere between $20,000 and $40,000 that was being paid to individuals from the United States to individuals in Guatemala. These names were redacted in every one of these cases. So they are not telling us who this money was paid to. So I want to ask you, how much money is $40,000 in Guatemala or $20,000 a month in Guatemala? Is that a lot well, of money? Yes, it is, it, is, it is a lot of money, you know. $40,000 is like uh, $320,000 quetzales. And the minimum wage here in Guatemala is 3,000 quetzales. So it's uh, it's 100 times the minimum wage. And so what type of person would the United States be paying and redacting their names for that amount of money on a monthly basis or on a regular basis, seemingly, where they redact these names, they spent, you know, on these obligated awards, almost $700,000 to individuals where they redact the names. Again, these are U.S. tax dollars. So we're not allowed to know who these people are and they're refusing to identify them. Is that something that you've looked at yourself in terms of investigating why Guatemalans are taking this? This type of money from the U.S. government and exactly what it's for? Is this some sort of political thing? Are they infiltrating in some way into the government? I mean, what what do you sense this money is for? When I talk with the person that who is in charge on the investigation right now, the law here in Guatemala says that only this person can allow to talk about some things in the, of, of the investigation. Uh, saying that, he told me that I can tell if I was asked uh, this kind of information, I can tell that he went to the judge to make the raid the, the last week by three felonies. Uh, laundry money, uh, influence traffic, that is it's like some that you are not allowed here to go to talk to, to persons in the government and regard um, and get a benefit of that. You know, that that's a traffic influence. And the other felony was child abuse. He and she, because there is a lot of people right now attending this, uh, they are working in this matter to to get information about this thing. But the claim, yes, they are telling that there, co there is coming money from the United States of America and even from the government of the United States of America to these NGOs. And maybe they are not using the money to the purposes that they are, they are intended to use it. Well, on that point, it's not just the United States of America. We've also identified Bill Gates has given, you know, around $50 million to save the children. George Soros has also given money to that organization and to various NGOs. You know, I want to ask you, what is the impact of these mega billionaires like George Soros going and throwing around millions of dollars or Bill Gates throwing around $50 million and more? I mean, the amounts of money we're talking about are just ludicrous into these NGOs that then are you know, really seemingly sort of influencing these countries, the directions of them, migration patterns and what happens at the United States border, which includes, you know, really how permissive we are when it comes to illegal, illicit criminal activity. Well, let me tell you, we have to investigate that. But we have had proper protests here in Guatemala the, from October through through January against Ministerio Público of Guatemala because we were investigating 
the, the maybe the fraud in the elections in Guatemala. Regarding that, the investigations have 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 permitted us to see that there is a lot of NGOs also that were working with the protesters and trying to give them money to to be in those protests. But we are working in the investigation. I can tell you in so that, the, was, that was in Guatemala. You had yes. basically these NGOs paying exactly. different people to show up at protests. Exactly. So I will not be surprised that that can also is going to be uh, the same thing in, in this investigation. I've got another item here from looking into these grants. I mean, we added it up. We're, we're at not far from $500 million flowing in three years from the Biden administration into Guatemala for various purposes and through these NGOs. Um, and that's that's specific to Guatemala. If you go broadly to these NGOs, which operate within Guatemala, that number will go up even more. You know, I want to ask you, have you uncovered any connection that leads you to believe any sort of indication that the cartels are working with some NGOs. Not, I'm not going to name any specifically, but the cartels are working with some NGOs, and those NGOs are funded by the Biden administration with U.S. taxpayer dollars. We cannot put aside anything and everything is possible. So our investigator, Rando Land, he also looked into something really troubling, and that was extensive U.S. payments to Guatemala that apparently are designed to export left-wing ideology to your country. These are some of the grants, and I'm going to read you just a little piece of these. Um, In one case, we were paying $468,000 to, quote, improve the livelihoods of marginalized groups by providing technical assistance to community groups on management, government, leadership, and entrepreneurship skills, okay? It's a very broad grant. And we've got another one giving $125,000 to indigenous Maya healers. And uh, I I just wanna ask you a couple things. Is this money reaching the people? And why do you think the US government is doing this? Is this appropriate that the US government is spending $125,000 on indigenous healers? I, I'm gathering that's shamans or, you know, things along those lines. Is that something you think is number one, the place of the United States to be doing? But number two, is that actually where the money is going in some of these cases? And you don't have to speak to this specific grant, but in general, does this make sense to you? The amount of money I'm talking about in these grants, are you seeing this type of money in used into the economy in Guatemala, or does something seem very fishy to you? In every school, in in every government school that works with uh, the judicial branch, the Ministerio Público, who is attorney general's office, police that works in the investigations, the person that works in the attorneys that that gives uh, help to the people that cannot pay an attorney, everybody works with USAID with different capacities and giving information in those schools, you know. So it makes a lot of sense. And saying that, when we started to, to make some investigations here in Guatemala or took as in, an institution the decisions that I told you, they didn't, didn't work with us anymore. But we know that that is happening. There are some claims about that matter. We are investigating. And I know that the, when the investigations get results, we are going to we are going to be able to ask your question, but uh, I guess that that is going to be positive. Well, that'll be part two. You know, um, I I do want to dive in a little bit further on this because, you know, we found it was almost half a million dollars uh, grant to the Inter-American Foundation to benefit excluded populations of young people with non-traditional gender identities and sexual orientations. So this brings me to a broader point. The United States, the State Department, USA, they've been accused by many different countries of using grant money to influence other countries where the social culture is not friendly to all of these crazy new gender identity, you know, sort of ideologies and saying, hey, you want this money over here? Here's the carrot. Well, you're going to have to bring in the education that accepts these new gender ideologies, the transitioning of children sexually and things along those lines. There's also the allegation that they are going and re-educating government employees. So I wanna ask you a two-part question here. Are they doing this to children in Guatemala where the US influence and grant dollars results in kids being taught these left-wing ideologies about sex and gender, which is totally inappropriate? And secondly, are we seeing the mass re-education of government officials in Guatemala to fit the ideological needs or desires of the Biden administration Democrat 
Democrats more broadly, who are in charge of this money via the State Department and other places, because the amount of money we're talking about going into Guatemala is not a small amount. And there are some very unusual payments from the State Department specific to Guatemala. So what can you tell us about those two questions? To give a response to both questions is yes, you know, because I, I'm going to tell you a, a, an experience that we have here in, in, in Ministerio Público Guatemala, in the Attorney General's office. When the Attorney General started the project to help the child that were abused here, it is called MINA. We started to talk to uh, the, all the cooperation by the different countries that, that are work, uh, friendly with us and started to, to, talk, to work together. When we started to see the, the, the different themes that were put in, in the capacitation for, for psychologists and for social workers, we saw that there was a theme in the list that was called um, Pink Boys, Light Blue Girls. So they were they were um, making a, a use of words, you know, because in, in, in the Latin America countries, the pink is, is usually put for girls and the light blue is usually put for boys. But they were inter, in, in, interacting, you know, the words, so they were trying to put the psychologists and the social workers to take these themes in through their capacitations. So we told them, you know, maybe these kind of things are not, not good to talk when a, a child has been abused. We have to help them in another way. Maybe later we have we can talk about this kind of matters, but we have to talk with their parents, you know, because the parents have to give the consent to to the, the different themes that are put in, in the knowledge of the, of the children. But because of that, that agency of cooperation didn't work with us anymore since 2018, you know? So yes, it happens. I, I, I live that, you I know? They cut off communication with you when you went to them and said, hey, we need to get the consent of parents. Yeah. We need to not teach this to abuse children. We need to pull this back a little bit. Talking with them about sex and gender and transitioning is not appropriate. They just cut off communication with you. Yes, yes, they call it communication. If, if you subscribe to this, and I do, um, the idea is that we're using this money to basically bully other countries into accepting an ideology that does not match with them. You know, myself being Cuban, I know Latino culture is very gendered, and we are a very respectful culture to the different gender roles and the things that make us wonderful as men and women because we all have strengths and we complement each other's strengths and weaknesses perfectly. I mean, I think that's ordained by God in itself. It's the reason reason for our being. You know, we're supposed to be with each other and make families and things along those lines. But yes. these concepts, they explicitly attack the nuclear family as well. And I'm wondering, you know, what effect are you seeing socially, culturally, when it comes to the family and social identity in Guatemala? Is this export of U.S. far left ideology influencing or damaging the family in Guatemala? Yes, th there is, there is a, a special focus uh, principal uh, actions here in Guatemala coming from different other countries around the world, trying to help us in different many cooperation ways, but they put, yes, they put these kind of themes on the on every cooperation. Uh, I used to work, before I was a general secretary, I used to work here in Ministerio Público as secretary of, of international affairs. So I have I have the communication with everybody regarding these matters. So I can tell you that they put these kind of things in, in, in every cooperation, they put it. Is this also happening within the government where in government agencies, government employees are being re-educated in Guatemala to believe this far left ideology coming from the United States that we're exporting out there? We have seen in the, in the news that the president of the executive branch have put an, an acuerdo gubernativo, who is, which is a document that he he puts giving instructions to, to all his units, saying that they have to create the gender unit in every office in the except in the executive branch. So this is happening in the executive branch where people are sort of being re-educated into this far left ideology, including pronouns and gender and everything else. I just want to make sure I'm getting that right. Yes. Yes, exactly. So the Heritage Foundation here in the United States, they discovered at an NGO in Mexico flyers that were being spread about saying that they needed four more years of Joe Biden and that they needed to remind everybody there to vote for Joe Biden when they got to the United States. OK, these are people who are immigrating illegally. Does this surprise you at all that they found that? There is some persons 
I know it's not all the country. I know all, all the people in the United States of America don't maybe don't think that way. But there are some persons that are acting beyond the law, you know. And I will I will not be surprised that if it, if this is happening in Mexico and it could be happening in Guatemala, I will, will not be surprised if that I, I will see some flyer here in Guatemala. You know, sometimes when the information's delivered by someone like me and I say there's truly dangerous criminals that are able to come through right now because of the permissiveness at our border where we're seeing millions of people come in under Joe Biden. It's 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 a degree we've never seen. I mean, it is historic. There's yeah. nothing that comes close. Can you tell me as somebody in Guatemala you know, are there really seriously dangerous criminal elements that are coming from Central America, South America, into the United States of America through our southern border? And from an outsider perspective, do you just scratch your head and wonder why is the United States letting some very dangerous people in? That is happening. We have to fight together. Obviously, you guys have gotten communication from the United States border czar, Kamala Harris, right? She's been named the border czar by Joe Biden. So I'm sure she's reached out to try to lessen the criminal element that's coming into our country or, you know, maybe assist in in ensuring that felonous individuals, cartels, criminal syndicates, child traffickers, drug yes. traffickers are being dealt with, right? Uh, no, she, she came here to Guatemala. She didn't talk with, with uh, the attorney general. When she came here, we talked with uh, Samantha Power. She was so she's, uh, she works with the USA. She started talking with our attorney general saying to her, tell me, what are you going to, to say to me to convince me to give cooperation to you? And, uh, and the attorney general, uh, I respond to her, I don't have to do anything to convince you for anything, you know? I have a constitutional faculty to work for my country and I'm working for my country. So maybe you are not aware of what we are working together with the United States of America, but uh, I don't have to convince you of anything, you know? Wow. Uh, so, so Samantha, yeah. Power, Samantha Power went in basically saying, hey, well, what can you guys do for me here? What are you going to tell me to convince me we should cooperate to stop criminals? Is that essentially yeah. the pitch? Yes, that's a, that was essentially the pitch. Are you aware of any countries in South America, Central America? You don't have to name them because I know that puts you in a weird position. Um, but are you aware of any countries there that are explicitly sending their criminals to the United States? You know, like get release them from prison, they, let them go to the United States. We don't want them. Yes, I, I know that with these kind of claims that we have been receiving now, I know that we are going to investigate a lot of things and I know that we are going to find some things, you know. Some American media outlets have given numbers as high as 80 percent of all women and girls who cross the southern border illegally. They find themselves raped and sexually assaulted along the way. Do you think the U.S. government bears any responsibility for encouraging this migration pattern, you know, these illegal immigration patterns from Central America, South America to the U.S., because I don't think that most people understand just how dangerous the trip is. Can you explain on that? How dangerous is that trip? Are people aware of the sexual assaults happening? And does the U.S. have some culpability or responsibility for encouraging this? Because I'll remind people, all the way back in the 2020 elections, we saw every single candidate on the DNC stage raise their hands that essentially they would give free health care and all kinds of benefits to people who come here illegally, which obviously encourages them. So if you can, Please expand and let us know, you know, how do you feel about that? Is there culpability for the United States and, okay. and how bad is this problem? Okay, let me tell you, uh, here in Guatemala, and I, I guess that in all the Central American countries, there is the same effort to talk to everybody that this, this uh, trip is very dangerous, you know. But even though, and even there is a lot of information on that, people still is going to the United States of America. Saying that, there is also an increase of numbers since uh, since these administrations took the government of the United States of America, in, and not only in Central America. I went like two or three years ago to to Panama to a meeting of of, of Attorney General's offices, and in there they were talking about the Darien Pass passing, you know, and they were saying that the, besides the, the the information that they were giving from the United States to the people on the region that they can go to the United States of America, 
there started to be an increase of persons regarding from 10,000 people to 100,000 people in, 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 in a several amount of months. So there is have been an increase on people going to the United States of America the last three years. We have people here that are dying in the path and people that is being abused in the path, you know. And so we have to work together. But yes, that that is happening. I want to make people aware of something because it is particularly shocking at the border for people who don't know. Um, You know, I was talking with some Border Patrol officers and I asked about um, a bunch of underwear that were hanging on trees. I didn't understand why underwear would be hanging on trees. And they said, well, those are rape trees. Have you heard of these? Have you heard of rape trees and what's happening at the at the southern border? We have heard of that, you know, as I told you, there is a lot of information that usually you hear in the society, but to have the the opportunity to get a claim with information, giving us information for this kind of things, we didn't have that opportunity until now, you know. So this yeah. that why this this claim that we have, we have received is very important, and we have to take it seriously. Everybody, we have to take it seriously. Here in Guatemala, in Honduras, in El Salvador, in Mexico, in the United States of America, we have to work together because yes, we have heard that, but we didn't have the opportunity to put it in a, in a in a document way right, like we have now. Well, I know Mexico is very aware of it because um, these these have happened at many different spots along the southern border where, you know, basically these people who are committing the rapes, they're then collecting the undergarments of the victims, of the survivors in many cases. Many are killed along the way. Um, but unfortunately, you know, these, these women go through horrific, horrific abuse. Their undergarments are stolen, put on trees as trophies to essentially, you know, message out there to everybody else that they got this prize. And it's just horrifying to think about. But, you know, I just wonder, I mean, are we culpable? The United States, we're encouraging this to continue happening by encouraging people to come over knowing what these very perilous situations are. So, I mean, how do you see that? Is there some responsibility on the United States to stop encouraging this? Okay, I'm going to give you a personal opinion, you know. Um, The law is created to put order in a society. When you put different things in a law, it's because you have to fulfill those requirements. If you don't fulfill these requirements and, and and get that requirement done, you don't have order. Yeah, does this strike you as odd? I mean, I'm just looking over everything, all these grants here, and we're gonna have to do a separate episode to really go through the hundreds of millions of dollars in grants because what I noticed very strangely is the labeling on a lot of these grants is bizarre, very bizarre or redacted. And I have looked at grants like this and money flowing from the US to other countries before, And there's some very unique, strange stuff in these documents. I mean, especially the redacted individual payments I thought were very bizarre. Does all of this seem weird to you that the United States is getting so involved in one country? And why, if it does strike you as odd, why do you think they're doing it? What do you think the intention is in the long run? Because the way I see it, it looks like the United States is trying to make Guatemala sort of a satellite state that they control. And it's not very different in my mind from sort of what they're doing in Ukraine, where we spend billions and billions upon billions of dollars to try to control another country and influence foreign policy in a direction where we get what we want and we spread our ideology to countries where traditionally they're a lot more conservative socially than, you know, the left in the United States is. That's how it comes off to me. But I want to ask you, to you, does it look the same way? Yes, yes. I'm not surprised on this information, you know. We don't understand how, why they have put this focus and principal focus on this institution, you know, and in the country also. Maybe the, the, the answer is going to be in the information that has been given us in, in this claim, you know, because maybe we are going to find that there is happening something here that is has been giving a lot of persons a lot of money, you know, and everything goes to money. That's what I'm seeing in a speculative way now. I have to to expect that the, the investigation is going to go further. We have to get a lot of information. 
put it in an official way through a judge, and then we are going to have a conclusion on that. There's been an uptick here in the United States of people claiming asylum for very official and very suspect reasons, where they're trying to come here in numbers we've never see, seen before and claim asylum from violence and things like that. And a lot of these NGOs are training them on how to do it. They'll say, you need to say this if you want to be able to stay in the United States. Have you heard of that? Yes, yes, we have heard of that. We don't have claims on that, you know, but we have heard that, yes. We also, as institution, have a lot of cases that a judge have allowed to put some arrests to some, on some people. People has gone from Guatemala to the United States, and they are now there, and they are not facing the law here. So you've got criminals on the run, running away yeah. from justice in Guatemala, living... Yeah here in the United States and probably benefiting, getting public benefits, because in many cases, you know, we're not vetting anybody. And then we've got places like New York handing out gift cards to them and people giving all types of public benefit coming from U.S. taxpayer dollars. So we're paying for criminals that you guys would like to lock up in prison, but you can't because the United States is harboring them, correct? Yes, yes, correct. And, and I wanna, I'm going to give you an example. In a case here in Guatemala, the unit in the, in the attorney general's office asked to the judge for an arrest. So the, the person here in Ministerio Público asked for a red alert to be executed in, in Interpol. So we sent it to Interpol, and Interpol told us that they have information that they this must be a political persecution, and they were not going to execute the red alert. So uh, we don't know in which law they, they support this because uh, the Interpol, they only execute, they don't analyze anything, you know, because here in Guatemala, a judge has already been given a legal analysis on that and have put the, the instruction on that. So it's very, very interesting and very unbelievable. <laughs> Are there murderers and child rapists and things like that who have fled your country and they're escaping justice and they're living in the United States uh, being harbored here? Yes, I'm for I'm from corruption also. Wow. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I think people I think people should be very concerned and upset about that. And we should be helping Guatemala to bring these people to justice. Final thing, I I, I want to press in on this one thing. The 70 percent. OK, so 70 percent of all unaccompanied minors coming from Guatemala and Honduras, the vast majority coming from Guatemala. Do you have any reasonable explanation for that that does not involve massive crime? No, I, I don't have explanation. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. I think listeners who have watched this interview are definitely a lot more informed on what's going on down there and maybe a lot more informed about their own government and how we're spending our money and how we're intervening in other countries in ways that I think are totally inappropriate and then refusing to cooperate in the ways that are appropriate to protect our own citizens and the interests of our country. Um, I, I think, you know, what's been done here is shameful. And I, I'm sorry on a personal level that you and the attorney general have been drugged through the mud the way you have been. Um, and I would like to see a day where we can cooperate. And I think that maybe as a result of this interview, maybe some AGs on a state level will cooperate appropriately with you guys in these investigations to get justice, to, you know, arrest the criminals as appropriate who have done crimes that are truly heinous. I mean, when you go to the border, and I think a lot of Americans are disconnected from this, they don't understand that a vast majority of the women and girls who are brought over here, they are raped along the way. There's nothing empathetic or kind or compassionate about allowing this to continue. We need order. We need law and order specifically. So I thank you for joining us. And uh, this won't be the last time we talk to you. I expect we'll talk again as this develops and we're able to give more information to people about exactly what's going on so that all questions can be answered and the truth can be aired because ultimately that's what the world deserves. We live in a world where I think people want the truth and so we're gonna give it to all. Thank you very much to you because you gave us a, a special space to talk about these kind of issues, you know? We don't understand the, the different ways that works, that God, God works, you know? But we know that there is a purpose on this and. These are divine connections that we have to, to use to say to the people that something is happening here. What you just heard is an interview that's guaranteed to enrage the highest levels of government in both Guatemala and the United States. But someone had to conduct it. One of the hallmarks of a dictatorship is politicized law enforcement. If the Biden administration gets what it wants, that's exactly what Guatemala is going to have. The attorney general and the public ministry will be replaced by loyalists who are favorable to the Biden administration. 
And we might never learn what's actually going on with these NGOs and specifically what's happening to the children in their care. As of now, the investigation into Save the Children and other international NGOs in Guatemala remains unclear. What's clear already from our conversation with these officials and our own research is that a comprehensive probe into U.S. spending in Guatemala is badly needed, and millions of dollars of this funding should be terminated immediately. We should not be funding shamans or gender activism anywhere, much less in Central America. And even the possibility that U.S. taxpayer dollars could be facilitating human trafficking is simply intolerable. We'll have an update soon, including a deeper dive into both the allegations of child trafficking concerning NGOs in Guatemala and the extraordinary waste of taxpayer dollars in this country. This kind of misconduct only thrives when people don't pay attention to it. And that's about to change.